In this video, we're gonna have a look at some different ways to create a really quick run animation on our character. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into Unreal Engine 5. Once that's up, we're gonna go over to Games. We're gonna choose Third Person because we want this character and her animations in there. Uh, this all looks good on the right and I'm just gonna call this Run Animation. Hit create. Okay, you should see something like this. This is the third person map. So we're gonna come in inside this cube. And we're gonna hit control space to bring up our content drawer. And I like to hit dock in layout to keep it there just because I'm used to it. And then we're gonna go over to characters, mannequins, meshes. And here we can see our new Unreal Engine 5 mannequins, Manny and Quinn. So we're gonna take Quinn, put her into the world. Then we're gonna go back up to content. We're gonna create a new folder to put all our sequences stuff in. We're gonna call it cinematics. Double click here, right click, animation, level sequence. That's how we create a level sequence. We're gonna call this run animation. Open that one up. Go over to our outliner, select Quinn and drag her into Sequencer. Instantly we get this other animation menu and this Anim Outliner. We actually don't want the control rig and these other tr extra tracks it's thrown in there. So we're gonna select the control rig track and skeleton mesh component and hit delete. Now there's a, a bug at the moment in Unreal Engine 5 where after you delete a control rig, the gizmo goes away so you can see I can't move them in space anymore even on other objects so the fix for that is to close sequencer and then open it again and it's back see little arrows all right I'm going to hit Control shift s just to save all our progress so far and we're going to add an animation so we add animation let's search for run now there's mf run and mm run mf is mannequin female MM mannequin male. So we're going to go for mannequin female run. And if we just select here, get a better view and hit play, she runs on the spot. Let's drag that out so she keeps running. Okay, but we want her to move along the ground while she's running, right? And this is a bit that people often don't get quite right and it's very easy to notice. So I'm going to show you a few tricks for this. So if you go over here to the transform, expand that out, location, and just key the location on frame one or frame zero. Then come over to where the cycle starts to repeat, key the location again, and then move her along that axis. Now, I actually don't like doing it this way. I prefer hitting the auto key button up here, which is off by default and then just moving along the axis. And you'll see it creates a key for me. Okay, and now when we play back, let's get a better view. She starts, but then she stops. You'll also notice that she goes slowly and then speeds up and then slows down. This is called an ease in and an ease out. And the reason it's happening is because these keyframes, if we select them and right click, are set to cubic auto. So to better understand what's happening. Let's click the show animation keys in a curve editor. And we'll bring that off to the side a little bit. And you'll see the Z and X are just flat lines. So they're not really animating. But if we click transform and click the Y, we get a full frame view of the Y. And we can see the curve down here starts off completely flat and then ramps up. And that's why she goes slow, then quick, and then she slows down again. So when we run, we actually just move at a constant speed. So we want to change this so that the, these little handles point at the other keys. So you can go in there and tweak it like this, but a better way is to actually select the keys, right click and hit linear. You can also do it out here on sequencer. So you can select them all here, right click and linear. And you'll see they change to these green triangles. Okay, so now we've done that and she's running at a constant speed, but it's, she's barely moving in space. She should be going much further. 
So here's where my first trick comes in. We could go in and you could start trying to keyframe here, but it just gets very messy. What you should do is you select this track, you right click here, and where it says pre-infinity, hit linear. And where it says post-infinity, hit linear. So now, both before and after these keyframes, she's still moving. She's still moving way too slow though, right? But the easy way to change this now is if I select this keyframe and I just drag it this way, she's moving that same distance, but in half the time. So you see she's moving much quicker. The best way to figure out exactly how far she should be running in a run cycle like this is to take a look at her feet. So you want her foot to be stuck on the ground throughout the contact. See here, we want her foot to stay her toe to stay in that position while she's running. See how it slides back? We've got to fix that. So to fix that, all we actually have to do is click and drag the keyframe, but you'll see once I click, it jumps to that point in time and she's way off my screen. So the way to fix this is you go over the magnet, click this drop down, and untick both of these, snap to press key and snap to dragged key. And this is gonna mean when we click or drag on this key, it no longer jumps our time slider there. So we can now click and drag it along and we can play with it a bit. So we want it to go a little bit quicker. And that's looking a little better. We can maybe go one or two more key frames further. Do you see now that her foot is stuck? the ground pretty much we can see that her animation will look a lot better she's running each stride is the exact right length so that's one method to getting your run cycle looking right really quickly now we're gonna have a look at another one so I'm gonna go over here to content browser I'm gonna go in I'm gonna make another level sequence we call this run animation generated and you'll see why in a second we'll open that one up select quinn and this time let's add her over here we'll hit the plus track act as a sequencer and because she's selected we don't have to search down here we can just hit add skm quinn we get all this extra stuff we don't want so let's delete that we get our bug where we can't see our transform anymore so we're just going to save the sequencer close it and then open it again and now our transform arrows are back. Okay, and we're gonna go over and hit plus animation, run, grab that one in. I'm just gonna loop this. And for this one, we're gonna do a little trick that actually gets it perfectly right instantly. So we're gonna, over here on a transform, we're gonna right click, import from animation root, and we're gonna search run. So mf underscore run underscore forward. And here you see it adds all these keyframes and instantly it's right. Now it does start back because it only does one loop of it. So we're gonna expand this transform track out at the bottom, drag that out and we're gonna right click it and say post infinity cycle with offset because we want it to repeat, but we want it to add on to the end so that she keeps running further. If we didn't do, if we just did cycles, she would start, come back to here. And there you go. That's actually 100% perfect. Like her, you can see her feet are rock steady on the ground there. So how does this work? Okay, well the the animation we're using actually comes with root animation in it. So if we go over here on the left and we scroll down, you can see that it's got force root lock on. So if we untick that just for a second, you can see that she actually takes off from her mark. So this way, while very quick and handy for animations that have root motion, it's not gonna work for every animation. So that's one way. And we've kind of just been animating in a straight line so far, right? This is not very handy for a lot of scenes. Here's another very quick way to animate your character in sequencer in a much more dynamic way. So close sequencer. We're gonna go up to the top here, edit plugins. And we're gonna search for something called take recorder. We'll tick that on and it's gonna ask us to restart. So just hit restart 
and we'll save anything we need to save. Okay, now when I come back in, I can go up to Window, Cinematics, and see that Tape Take Recorder has been added. So I'm going to click that one, and then I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to click Plus Source, Player. And you'll see why in a second. So now we're going to hit Play. So when I hit Play, another Quinn spawns in. And if I click on the window, I can move my mouse to move around her. I can then click W, A, S, and D to move around and space to jump. What I want to do now is hit F8, move over to the right here, and hit the red record button. It's going to start a countdown, and then once that's over, I can push, press F8 again, and click back in the window, and I'll take control of that character. So, I can move around the scene like this, and you'll notice down the bottom, there's a sequencer window and it's running in real time and it's recording everything. So then when I'm happy with my recording, I can hit escape. And then down the bottom right, it's going to tell me that the scene is finished recording. I hit browse to if I'm quick enough. Otherwise, you'll have to go to content, cinematics, takes, and then the date. And then I can open up one of the scenes that I've recorded. So I'm going to open up that one. So I can click this camera and then I can scrub along and I can see that it's recorded absolutely everything that we just did. I can actually dive into this sequence and see all the different tracks. So it's recorded a whole new animation. Now, if you wanted to take this animation and put it in your scene, you probably don't want to use this. This is currently on a third person character blueprint. So I'd recommend you instead Open up this animation, untick force root lock, hit save, and that's going to destroy this, but we can go over and we can create a new level sequence, we can add our SKM Quinn, delete our control rig, reopen sequencer, go over to animation. And if we search for scene 102, I think was that one. Because this character was captured from a reference of world zero, we need to go in the transform and just zero that out. And now when we scrub, she's in the exact right place. And if we were to bring this animation over, we would see she runs around all the obstacles exactly as we did in the capture. So this is a really good way to capture some semi-complex movement and animation really quickly. Because hand animating this kind of thing would be pretty annoying, getting the pacing and everything right of the transform. But Unreal Engine 5 does it all for us. I hope this video has been helpful. If there's something you want to see covered in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Until then, happy filmmaking.